A phone rang at a telephone counseling service. Twenty days have passed since the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami. Many survivors are voicing out their anxiety. This counselor says it must be tough not to know the whereabouts of your son. This counselor says you can't sleep, you say it's so hard, and you feel as if you're losing your mind. More than 500 people called in for counseling in two weeks. Some said they want to die. A clinical psychologist or psychotherapist says survivors will start to feel their sorrow deepen and it is after this that they'll start feeling confused. After encountering the biggest calamity in centuries, survivors are suffering psychological crisis. We have a report on efforts to support them. Welcome to today's close-up. I'm Hiroko Kunia. Survivors are torn with grief, losing their loved ones, and shocked for their houses and workplaces washed away by tsunami. They're also tormented by terror of tsunami waves, although they want to forget. The survivors of the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami are facing immeasurable fear and sorrow as three weeks of inconvenient lives in evacuation take toll, deepening their fatigue. Experts say they are now at a stage when they start to feel depressed and in anxiety of the future. Their life will never be the same. The need is rising to support them to improve their living conditions and provide psychological care at the same time. And people who may be forgotten are the public employees of the municipalities assisting the residents, although they themselves are also victims. They're busy engaged in restoration work without being able to take their time off. They're also in need of mental care. The people survived the threat on their lives in the tsunami, but are now facing a threat of crisis. It is now very important to alleviate the anxiety and support, psychological rehabilitation of the people who under underwent such sad and shocking experiences. Natori city in Miyagi prefecture was hit hard by the major tsunami. 700 lives have been claimed in the city alone and around 1,000 people still remain missing. This is a psychosomatic clinic in Natori that narrowly escaped the damage. The director, psychiatrist Dr. Noriko Kuwayama, has been seeing patients since the next day the earthquake struck. He says increasing number of patients are complaining symptoms unique to the victims of tsunami. This woman in her 70s was living with her son. After the earthquake, she fled to a higher ground. Her son was out, but came back home to save her and went missing. The woman says the tsunami came when her son came back. She says she was worried about her son, but fled anyway. The woman has been blaming herself ever since. She says it's her fault. She acted alone because she became scared. The doctor says she had no choice. The woman says it's equal to her killing her own son. The doctor says she doesn't have to feel that way. There was more than one hour between the earthquake and the tsunami. She re regrets that she might have been able to save her son. The doctor prescribed medicine to her so that she can sleep well and told her to continue seeing him. Doctor says people are feeling acute pain inside themselves and they may lose energy to stand up again. He says the critical period is about to come. The tsunami swept everything from houses to assets to job.
There are a number of survivors whose loved ones remain missing and feeling uneasy about it. Dr. Kwayama started touring evacuation centers in Natori City to provide counseling. He believes there are many evacuees who look fine at surface but actually are carrying heavy weight in their minds. So doctor has borrowed a room in the evacuation centers so that people can talk to him one by one free of care. This woman in her 30s have all her family members survived, but her house was washed away by tsunami. She complains the tsunami appears in her dream and wakes her up. She says she feels as if her heart would stop beating. Asked about specific dream, she says she is standing at a spot and looking around, but sees nothing. She says her chest feels tight and wakes her up. The woman says she went back to where her house used to stand, but everything was gone. She says she suffered hyperventilation that moment. She says it does not help to think but she's worried about the future. She says she's been sleepless, and when she thinks about her future, tears just come running down. But she says she cannot cry out loud because there are people sleeping around her. Because of the lack of privacy in the evacuation center, she has not been able to cry out loud, and that has been distressing her even more. Dr. Kuwayama is worried about another issue, that is the mental state of children. As life in evacuation centers prolong, doctor thinks that some children might be holding down the emotions. On this day, two weeks after the earthquake, Dr. Kuwayama organized a soccer match for kids in the evacuation center. He believes it is very important for the mental health to exercise and relax and regain normalcy. Adults who are watching by also joined in. For the first time in two weeks, smile was back to everyone. clinic. She says she recalls that day and doctor says that that's what they want to deal with. The woman says she's frustrated and the doctor says he's glad that she came to the clinic for he has better understanding and the woman says she feels a little bitter now having seen the doctor. Dr. Kwayama told her to come back again any time. Doctor says the critical time has come. He says the mental care has to be provided in earnest and says that it is a grand theme that has to be dealt with over a period of three months, six months, a year, two years, or even over an extensive period of a decade. He said it is important to take long time and deal attentively and with care on this issue. 